Good evening. Thank you so much for the invitation, Clemency, Shuji san Thank you so much, and Michael. It's a great pleasure to be here tonight with all of you. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to say that it's. Um, I had the um, great opportunity to curate the first ever exhibition of Frida Kahlo's wardrobe, shown at the Frida Kahlo Museum last um, November to the, in November 23rd. So, from a temporary exhibition, now it became a permanent exhibition at the Museo Frida Kahlo. The Museo Frida Kahlo, it's very well known as the Blue House, is where Frida Kahlo was born, where she lived, and where she died. In 2004, her wardrobe was discovered. And this wardrobe was closed for over 50 years um, by mandate of Diego Rivera, her husband. Um, the story goes like, Frida dies in 1954, <coughs> Diego Rivera dies in 1957, and it's as if he knew he was going to die three years later, because he left everything prepared. He left all their artworks um, with the Central Bank of Mexico, and he left his very good friend Dolores Romero as the carer or the, yeah, the person in charge of all uh, Frida and Diego's uh, collections. Among these things was the Blue House as well. And Dolores Romero took care of this house for many years. So why am I telling you all this background? Because um, Rivera, left all his documents and his <coughs> personal belongings in the personal um, bathroom of the artist and in another little storeroom. And he said that he wanted these storerooms to be open 15 years after he passed away. But Dolores Olmedo decided <coughs> not to open them, not to open these storerooms, till she died. And she lived a very long life. <laughs> so she passed away in 2002. So from 1954 that freedom passed away, and then Dolores Romero died. Then 50 years later, no, no, exactly. So then um, the museum director and then Dolores Romero's um, son, Carlos Felix, they thought, well, we probably are losing a very important archive here, let's open this bathroom. And then all the treasures came out. It took them about um, three years to four years to really restore and look at everything because their personal collection of photographs came out, the dresses, the wardrobe, personal belongings of both artists, letters, and communist documents, and so on. So by the time I was um, curating the, uh, her wardrobe, <coughs> I felt there was a need to document um, these items to give the audience um, the opportunity to see them as you can see them today as we are surrounded by them. And this is when um, Ramon Reverte, who is the editor of this um, book you see here today, and, um, and I were having a discussion with, with the director of Museo Frida Kahlo and, and said that she, she was the best person to do this and for us to ask her and Ramon was like I don't think she would do this, we cannot commission Ishi Ushi Miyako, something like this and I was like, why not? <coughs> and, <laughs> and he was like, because she's, she's very big, and I'm like, okay. So I contact her. I contact Tomoka. <laughs> and told her, hey Tomoka, we're doing this. Do you think Ishuji would be interested in coming to document with the soccer? And then Ishuji was like, <laughs> who's this woman? <laughs> so I went to see her in Yokohama. And she told me that if I hadn't come to see her, 
to see her at her house, she wouldn't have done this. Because she thought it was like a joke. So is she she said, why did you um why did you take it on? What was it that CSA said that persuaded you to do this project?
assistant, but I just had a little health handheld 35 millimeter camera and I took them freehand and that's the same way as I've always taken photos for, for my previous series, so it was just the same uh, way of photographing that I usually use. Or, or this 
blouses that she was looking and these details she would understand how as a woman even exactly um, how you will with all this even for your child or for mm -hmm. yourself if you're so I, I guess you know it was it was a really a, a lot around and that the way she looks at things is uh, very delicate and, I, and and we also wanted to to take that idea of that <coughs> Frida and suffering I think she suffered a lot but she also had a great time she was a woman who uh, um, who, who drank tequila who loved was very coquettish as you can see from all the items we found a woman who loved to dress up mm -hmm. and that uh, loved to wear makeup and um, so it was another side no I guess of, of what everyone thinks always oh, of this It was a, a definitely an intimate side that I think um, she, she definitely portrays through all these amazing photographs. No, definitely. And issue, she said, um, this project is not the first time you've ever photographed the traces that people leave behind. <coughs> Could you maybe talk a little bit about how this relates to your past projects, like Hiroshima or your mother's project? うん、あの、ちょっとやっぱり私自身非常に緊張して始めたんですけれどもあの、3週間ブルーハウスで撮影してますよね。で、その中で段々その緊張感が溶けて、いわゆるフリーダ・カーローのイメージからどんどんどんどん離れていって
フリーダに出会って広島も初めて広島に出会ったという、まあ、私自身の個人的な歴史の中で、まあ、今回本当にフリーダ・カーロと出会ったということはすごく私にとってプラスになっていますだそれは私が会いたくて会ったじゃなくてシルセに呼ばれてそれでフリーダもよく来たねってこう歓迎してくれたようなそんな気持ちで。So I first met Frida through her clothes, and I first met Hiroshima through those clothes as well. For me, that was a huge plus on this project. I didn't go there wanting to meet her, but I was invited, and then I went, and she welcomed me. Um, you've been obsessed, as you should say, or not obsessed, you're so interested with material and with fabrics before. And the last show we actually did, did, did included Silk and Dreams, which includes all the kimonos. You said at some point in this project that you realize the connections between the traditional Mexican garb and the kimono, the traditional um, outfit which you were wearing last night, of Japan. えっとですね、民族衣装っていうのは全世界同じような歴史と形を持っていますであのティワナドレスっていうのは私、まあ、フリーダーがいつも着ていたメキシコの民族衣装なので、まあ、その中で、まあ、なんていうかなたくさんティワナドレスを見た時にティワナドレスっていうのはもう紐なんですねスカートが紐で。えー、と長四角でグラスも四角なんですだから何かこう体を締めるんじゃなくて何かゆったりと体を何て言うのかなあのまとう体にまとわりつく<笑>みたいな感じでほとんど日本の着物と同じなんか感覚を感じたんです。I feel the traditional, uh... Clothing has the same kind of history and the same kind of form around the world. So, these、uh, Tijuana dresses that Frida wore, the traditional Mexican clothes, when I saw those, I felt that they were similar to the Japanese kimono in that they were square, it was a long square skirt, a square blouse, and these weren't clothes that, that bind you and that tie you in, but just clothes that cover the body. だからあの基本的にその民族衣装のあり方っていうのはそのなんていうかのおしゃれとかなんとかじゃなくてある種のこう機能的なものと伝統的な色とか模様とか刺繍とかそれがほとんど日本の着物も同じような意味があってだからなんかこう共通するメキシコと日本ってかったんですけれども何かそうだったんだ歴史ってこういうふうに。And I, I realized that traditional clothing are very, is very functional.、Um, and you have the traditional colors, patterns, embroidery in the same way as you do in Japan. And even though Mexico and Japan are very far apart, I felt that similarity of something that, that really came home to me during the project. I think that there's something really lovely in these images that they're both incredibly familiar but also very alien. Particularly as a woman, they're very familiar, you recognize certain things, and yet they're also very distant in that they represent a different, different culture, particularly for me. So, I think one question I wanted to ask you is with the piece at the end, and also the work upstairs with the armature that you wore, what does the whole represent? Or what, or what was that for?、Um, There is a twin piece that we don't have in the archive <coughs> where she has this corset piece with a baby, with a fetus. And then she cut a hole in this one when, when, when she, she lost the baby.、Oh, cool. oh. So there are two pieces that speak to each other. And also, the, the hole is also, I think it symbolizes. The loss of, of this baby because it's exactly the same round and the, the other corset, the、That's、same、true. area where the baby was. And,、um, but also, in terms of 
getting, um, it's not that she put her hand or anything inside, you know, I think it's, it's, it's definitely it's just more symbolic. symbolic in that respect. <coughs> あ、いや、私が聞いてるのは、そうではなくてなんか歴史が厚いから風通しよくするためにはなかったって聞いてる。I actually heard that the hole was for ventilation because it's so hot in Mexico. Something to help her overcome her her disease. 